Welcome back to Fast Road Vehicle Solutions. We've got this lovely M2 in today, 2019 model. Uh, unfortunately, it looks like it may have suffered crank up slip. So what we're gonna do with this one is I'll walk you through the process on how we determine if it's slipped, and then we'll walk you through the process of how we'll fix it. Hopefully, not too much damage, because the car does still run. Um, so hopefully it's not let the bolt out and let the timing go all the way. So basically, customer's driving the car along, drivetrain error came on the dash, engine management light came on. Um, he's took it to a garage that he knows that has scanned it and they've sort of said that it, the timing's out basically. Upon our advice, he's not driven it after that um, and the car's recovered into us. So when we've got it in, we've scanned for codes. Um, so the codes that we've got on there, ignore the top one because we've just taken the um, we've taken the inlet pipe off just to see if it had a capture plate on it because he's been driving it for a lot longer than people normally manage to. Um, second one, charging pressure control. That is as a, as a consequence of the code below it, which is the exhaust camshaft angle deviation in respect to the crankshaft out of tolerance. So basically what these codes mean is the exhaust camshaft is out of tolerance to the crankshaft which you've got two well you've got four, three pulleys the inlet the exhaust and the crankshaft and the car has detected that the exhaust isn't in line with where it should be in regards to the crankshaft which is usually means that the timing slipped or on other models chain may have stretched or something's out of alignment to do with the timing basically we won't know until we ship it down charging pressure control switch off that is as a consequence of the exhaust camshaft being out of line, the car's detected an issue. That's basically saying that the car's in limp mode, it's turned all boost off, it won't allow you to have any boost. Um, and then obviously the one above that is just us. We've taken the uh, we've taken the inlet off so that we can see if it's got a capture plate on, which it hasn't, funnily enough. Um, so next step is we've got to strip the car down and find out how far out of time it actually is. So as if by magic, Ben's stripped it all down so we can get all the timing tools on. So the crank's locked off at the minute. Um, with the, this is what we use to lock the two cams together. So basically what should happen is you should be able to slot it in those slots there on the cams and it should sit flush on the head. So you can see this side sits nice and flush and you can see that there's a big gap there for the exhaust cam. So diagnostic tool was telling us right the exhaust cam is out in comparison to the crank inlet cam is all fine it's all in time still and the cranks obviously still in time because the timing pin's gone in so yeah somehow this exhaust side has slipped uh, so we've got a next job is to take all the pulleys off and the crank pulley to see what's gone on there so there we have it, the crank orb is off. So now I've got it on the bench, I can show you more what, what commonly fails on them uh, and what's happened with this particular one. So as you can see, the gears are able to float on the shaft. So you've got, this is in three pieces. So you've got the main hub, which is here. You've got a little friction washer there, which is supposed to grip onto this part and grip onto the second gear which then goes on top of it like that. And once this is tightened up, BMW's engineers have determined that once that's tight, that should not move at all. And then you've got your oil pump gear here, which again, there's a friction washer between that and that. So what looks like has happened on this one is this friction washer here on the back of the oil pump drive. If you look, oh, it's difficult to focus, but if you look very closely, you can see that the friction material has sort of shifted a little bit on that washer. It's actually, so you can see from there, it's actually crumpled it up ever so slightly. So it's kind of crushed. And these are like, I wouldn't say like, you see that dent there? That is, they're kind of like punched into, you see where it's punched into it? They're kind of like punched into the hub and it's obviously just moved enough just to break that off. Um, the other side is still on there. You can see the little dent there, it's still on there. But I think the whole hub has slipped on this back part, basically, in this situation. And I think the reason that the customer was able to drive it for a bit longer than what normally happens before they have catastrophic failure 
is what we've seen happen before is this when they slip of this washer or this washer depending on which one slips you've got three options they normally snap and then the washer falls out and when the washer falls out obviously you've got the play between there so then that allows the hub to kind of compress even more than the bolt when it was tight and then what happens is the bolt backs out and then the whole thing slips and then that's when you get a catastrophic engine failure but luckily in this customer's case it looks like the washer's not completely failed albeit it's not held together and stopped it from slipping but it's not completely failed so it's it's held it together a bit better than what it was so to fix the issue with the common crank hub fault we have this the insane well this is a two pin crank hub they're also available in four pin um, both just as good as each other this is one piece so there's no, no way of these gears slipping. They're both joined together. And then for ad added security, you've got two pins there, which are then matched, drilled into the crank. Uh, so then pins slot into the crank. The bolt goes through as it would have done in the standard one. Once that bolt's all tight, there's nowhere that that can physically go. Um, this is a permanent full fix. Uh, you'll never have to worry about your crank up again. That's it, all back together, all timed up correctly. So as you can see, in comparison to how it was before, got the tool on, nice and flush on there. Nice and flush on there. Oh, where's that gone? There. All guides are on. The uh, timing tool for the front sensors is all in. Locking pins in the crank. All that's left to do now is just uh, build it back up, fire it up, and uh, should be good to go again. Right, so that's the M2 that slipped the crank up all back up and running. Luckily, the crank up hadn't slipped and damaged any valves. Um, the customer, because he's not damaged any valves, he's decided to upgrade his turbo. So he's now running the FRVS 700 turbos on there. Um, and also, we're in the middle of doing some custom tuning right now. So next time you see this car, it should be producing some crazy numbers and uh, hopefully some impressive draggy times. So watch this space. <laughs>